A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. Hi friends, thank you for joining me. I hope you're having a wonderful summer. It's a fun time of year just to kind of get back and think about the new school year and be creative, all those things you wanna make all year long and you don't have time to make, now's the time to do it. And I know for me personally, making stuff is kind of like therapy for this old woman. I love to make new things for my classroom. So I've got some great ideas to share with you today about alphabet letters. Now, let me tell you, there are many, many ways to teach alphabet letters. And I think the most important thing is, um, yeah, it has to be fun. Children need to play with letters before they can learn letters. And another thing that I wanna focus on today, I wanna to focus on active learning. When children spend a lot of time tap and swipe and doing worksheets, you don't get a lot going to the brain. And I think you have to remember how does this information get to the brain? Well, it gets to the brain through the senses. So children have to see things, they have to hear things, they have to touch things, and sometimes, yes, they even have to taste things. So I'm gonna share lots and lots of different multi-sensory ways that you can make learning letters fun and help children engage in a lot of different senses at the same time. Another thing we know about um, education is that children need to practice these things and over and over again. And I love what my daughter said one time. She said, you know what, mom? Children take it in and take it in and take it in and then something comes out. It's not just like you're gonna do something one time and they're gonna get it. And it's not like they're all on the same page when they come in your classroom. You're gonna have some children who know all the letters and can read, and you're gonna have other children that don't even know what a letter is. So that's why music and these multi-sensory things are just a great way to put it out there. And Carolyn Koslowski and I have a new little book called Playing With Letters, and I'm gonna show you some of the activities from that book. Now, these things I'm gonna focus on today are letters, but these can be used for shapes, or for numbers, or for vocabulary, or sight words, they can be used in lots and lots of different ways. Um, main thing is, we gotta keep it fun and gotta engage the children. So, um, one thing I wanted to talk about was um, some little puppets that you can make for your classroom. And these work so well for letters and um, uh, numbers and, and other things you might wanna work on. It's just a, an envelope that's sealed and you cut it in half and you would write the letters on here. Now, I think it's important for each child to have one. Ownership was an important, this is my S. And you can take this, have them take their little puppets and you can sing this song to the Hokey Pokey theme. You put your S in, you take your S out. You put your S in and you shake it all about. You make the S sound, s and then you put it down. Now I'm gonna say a word, if it starts with S, hold up your puppet, s if it doesn't keep your puppet down. Son, sister, toy, uh, that doesn't start with s, does it? Um, and then you can, you know, can you put your S under your chin? Can you put it behind you? Where is my S? Oh, it's on my shoulder. All of those positional words integrate everything together. And then instead of giving children a worksheet where they color things that start with S, let them draw things that start with S on the back of their puppet. Or your more mature children could write words with things that start with S. So that's just one little puppet. Um, another puppet that you might want to make this summer, these are paper plate puppets. And so if you staple two paper plates, uh, about a third, uh, two thirds of the way around, you can put your hand in here and then you have a little puppet. And so you can use these puppets for uh, different alphabet songs. You pass out one to each child. Um, you'll be at your birthday and when their letter comes up in the song, they get to hold up their puppet. You can also use these puppets and put them together and make words. Now, another thing to do with a paper plate um, is with a little letter worm. And so I've just got the little 
worm on one of my paper plates and I would pass out the other plates to the children and one at a time they would come up and they could put their plate down and see if we can make letter worm grow. Um, you could do this in alphabetical order or it would be even be good to do it out of order and one child at a time puts their plate down and then the next child comes up and puts their plate down and they would read like B and Y and then the next child might put M, whatever. Um, it could be in a random order and they would read their letter as well as those previous letters and then they can always ask the audience to join them if they don't know the letters and um, you can say them together. So two simple little things that you can get ready before school starts. Um, another simple prop, these are um, Play-Doh plates. Let me put this up here so you can see it. And I just got clear plastic plates and I wrote the letters with a permanent marker. I wrote it on the front and I also turned it over and wrote it on the back so um, that it wouldn't rub off so quickly. Now, these Play-Doh plates, they take the Play-Doh, they roll the Play-Doh, they put it on the letter, and they could make something that starts with that sound. It's just a wonderful multi-sensory thing to use. I love Play-Doh. You can also take Play-Doh, and the children can make Play-Doh cookies, so they roll the Play-Doh, and then they can take the magnetic letters and press them down in the Play-Doh. Or they can take a toothpick and write letters, uh, cook, make cookie letters. Um, or they can take a pencil and write in the Play-Doh and make their little Play-Doh plates. Um, another game that Carolyn uh, added in the book, I love this, it's um, Play-Doh Pantomime. And so um, they make something that starts with a sound, like if you're working on the letter F. One child would make something that starts with F and the other child has to guess what it is. Or you could do this in a small group. Um, this is a really fun game to play um, with Play-Doh. Uh, another multi-sensory thing that I, I just love, this is plastic needlepoint canvas, and yes, they still make this. You can buy it at Walmart and different um, hobby stores. Um, but what's cool about this, if you put a piece of paper on top and you take a crayon and they write with a crayon and you kind of have to press hard, after you write with the crayon, it has a texture and you can feel it. And so this would be something um, that you can also do with sandpaper, but I love the plastic needlepoint canvas. So after they trace this several times, you could tell them, you know, your homework is to go home and trace over the letter four times and tell your family what letter it is. And then you can look around the house for the letter. There's so many things that we do at school that we can send home for the children to interact with their families and do at home. And that's just a wonderful bridge that we want to make sure we do. Um, some other multi-sensory things that you can do, if you write with a water-soluble marker and then trace over with school glue, you have a textures letters that you can feel. Again, you can put a piece of paper on top of this and rub with the side of a crayon and they've got some rubbings. Uh, multi-sensory thing that um, you can't share, um, but if you have a child who's struggling, this is a fun thing to do with letters. If you write the letter with school glue and then sprinkle unsweetened jello or Kool-Aid on top when it dries, um, it has a texture, it has a smell, and they can also lick and taste it. Now, obviously you can't share these, um, and but this is kind of a fun thing to do to help children recognize the first letter of their name, particularly some of your younger children. Now, um, I also wanted to uh, share the idea about a letter office with you. And this is something, you know, that you could prepare these ahead of time this summer. And every child, um, you would have a file folder for each child and put the letters of the alphabet in the file folder. Let them decorate the front and back. This would even be something fun that they could take home and decorate with their parents. Um, they could do like a letter collage where they get alphabet uh, letters out of magazines and newspaper and cut them out and decorate their letter office. And then you could use these letter offices when you sing your alphabet songs. They could point to the letters. You could play a little game with the fly 
fly swatter. Can you find the letter K and give it a high five? Um, can you give R a high five? Can you find the letter that comes before V and give it a high five? So uh, again, you could tie this in with a lot of phonics activities and visual matching activities. Um, I also love my little eye pointer. I spy the letter Z or something like that. Now, every workshop I do, I share, share these and I hope you've all made these. If you haven't made these, summertime is a great time to do this. Um, these are what I call letter pops, and it's just jumbo craft sticks and magnetic letters, and you glue them on. And um, if you've never used E6000 before, let me get my tube of that. This is like all oh, the best glue in the whole wide world. I don't work for the company. I don't make any money. But if you've ever used this glue, you won't use anything but this again for your school projects. Um, you do need to keep it at home because it's toxic, and so these are good things to make this summer. But if you made these letters, then they could take take their letter and they could walk around the room and they could match it up with classroom print. What a great way, you know, to help them become more aware of the letters. You could take this on a walk around the school and let them find some different letters in the building. You could put these in a can in your classroom library, let them choose a letter and match it up in the book. All sorts of visual matching things. Your older kids could take these letters and get together and make words. You could also use these when you sing alphabet songs, you pass these out, and when they hear the letter that, um, that they're holding, they get to stand up and hold it up. Just many, many active, multi-sensory things that you can do with these. Well, take you 15 minutes to make these and won't cost you more than $5 to make these. Really good project for the summer. Um, letter lookers are always fun too. Just a pipe cleaner and you twist it into a magnifying glass. Um, Oh, do you see the letter B, the letter B, the letter B? Do you see the letter B somewhere in the room? And they take their letter looker and they find the letter B and then they frame it in the classroom. Um, anytime you know they find something and they touch it, that's a good thing. Uh, like when you sing your alphabet songs, A for apple, A, 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 B for bounce, B. Ba, 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 ba. C for cut. Stop. Turn turn the CD off. Turn the music off. Stop. And on that letter, like C, they have to walk around the room and they have to find it and touch it. So stop and touch. And then you would continue playing the song and maybe about five more letters in. You stop and they walk a room and they find it and they touch it. That way you're making sure that they're making that connection between what they're saying and the print. And for your struggling children, you can always let them do these things with a partner. Pair a child who knows letters with one who's struggling and they can do that together. Um, lots of multi-sensory things are in uh, the packet. I love one that Carolyn talked about where back writing, where the children stand in a circle facing each other's back and the first child says, this is an H, pull, pull, push. And then the next child writes on the next child's back and says, this is an H, pull, pull, push. And so it goes around the circle and they each write the letter on their friend's back. Uh, another multi-sensory thing, have them practice writing the letter in their hand or they can write the letter with their foot. Just wiggle their foot or write it on the floor. These swim noodles are so popular now. Um, good thing is you can buy them at the dollar store now and you cut them into sections and this could be their writing wand. And so they each have their writing wand and you have to practice first of all because they're gonna wanna wiggle and do different things with it. So you let them rawr, 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 Star Wars, rawr, rawr, whatever they wanna do with it. When you say Statue of Liberty, they freeze and hold it up. And then you let them move and wiggle and maybe play some music again. And when it stops, Statue of Liberty. And that starting and stopping is really good for that executive function. And, you know, let them just mess around and then stop. And then you can use these just for making some of your basic writing strokes like the 
vertical stroke and the horizontal stroke and circles and they can make triangles they can make all sorts of different things in the air and once they've mastered those pre-writing strokes then you can let them do letters in the air and once they know their letters they can write words in the air so um, this writing wand works really well with that and they can always use their invisible finger for writing in the air and doing different activities do you see you know we've just gotten so far from where we need to be with children um, and it's just it's so simple just to take a step back and think hmm how, one of the how can I use these senses how can how can I activate more of these pathways to the brain and make it fun for kids at the same time so that's what I try to do now I love sign language I'm not any good at it but if I were in charge of the world everybody would learn sign language because it's multi-sensory and it's engaging and the kids love it if you've never done sign language before go online learn how to do just the basic letters of the alphabet and as you introduce the letters you can tell the children you know this is the letter f and um, you can show them print this is F and this is how we do it in sign language. There's lots of books um, with sign language letters, but one of my favorite ones is just to use the children in your classroom. Use their hands and take a picture. And you can sing this song. It goes to the tune of he's got the whole world in his hands. I've got A, A, A in my hands. I've got A, A, A. In my hands, I've got a, 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 in my hands, and I can read. And you could go through the letters of the alphabet. Now, another reason I like sign language, children come to you with many different levels, and some of them are going to already know how to read, know all their letters, but you know what? I bet they don't know sign language. So it just kind of raises the bar a little bit. And it's such a quiet transition. You can say, you know, watch my hand, and when you see the letter that your name starts with, you may line up to go out to play or do whatever other transition you might be working on. Uh, another song I like to sing with sign language goes to the tune of Where is Thumpkin? Where is A? Where is A? Here I am. Here I am. What do you say? A? What do you say? A? 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 Where is B? Where is B? Do you see what an engaging, quiet song? You don't need a CD or anything. You can just start singing that, and that would just be a great transition to quiet children. I found if I can keep their little hands busy, they're going to be much more engaged and much less fidgety um, with some of the other friends in their room. Um, we've got lots of ideas for different learning centers in our book. One of them, just touch and tell. You take a sock and you put a letter in here and they reach in and they always love to reach in socks and they feel the letter and they try to figure out what it is and is it lines or has it curves or is it lines and curves and um, after they make their guess about what it is, they take it out and they look at it and were you right or wrong? And then they try to write it with a pencil. Handwriting, and it doesn't have to be perfect, but just the fact that children are trying to do that, that's a very good thing for the brain. They can just see the brain activated all over when children try to write by hand. And so um, little games like this are a great way to encourage children to write letters and like again there's no right or wrong whatever they try to do it's all good it's all good um, a long time ago we used to do a lot of cooking in our classrooms and, and some of my happiest memories are cooking memories and I know many of you can't do that now but I um, wanted to show you one thing that you might be able to do with pretzels pretzel twist and pretzel sticks and so um, you can use these when you talk about math making different geometric shapes you can use these for making numbers um, you can use these for making letters too so um, this one I'm going to nibble a little bit and then you see if you can guess what the letter is or um, I can make letters like this. I can put the curves and the lines together and make letters. So you can do 
all sorts of good multi-sensory things with pretzel twists and pretzel sticks and kids can even play a game with their friends where they try to guess which letter it might be. We've got lots of um, games in our book. Um, one of them, the dog bone uh, game. So you get an empty box of dog biscuits and you cut out bones and you can write letters on these. You can also play this game with sight words or shapes or numbers or whatever it might be. And on a few of the bones, you write the word woof woof. And so you put the bones in the box and you pass this around and each child one at a time, they will pull out a bone and they will identify their letter. And you know, if they don't know their letter, they can always phone a friend or ask the audience. And um, when a child gets woof woof, they get to get down on the floor on all fours and they get to bark like a dog. And that sounds so corny, but they love it. They just love to get down on the floor and bark like a dog. Uh, another simple th game that they love to play is a game called Flippers. Um, I've got a pancake spatula and I've got my pancakes. And you write an uppercase letter on one side of the pancake and a lowercase letter on the other or you can put the letter on one side <coughs> and the beginning sound on the other and they put these down and like this one with the flower they identify the sound that flower starts with and they take it and they flip it over <coughs> excuse me and it's self-checking because the letter f is on the back or whatever it might be working on they love to flip these over you kind of need to do this on carpet because you need something um, to go underneath it another game <coughs> that they love is boom and so this one um, was with letters but again you could do it with different things and um, so I'm going to shuffle these up and boys and girls you shout out the letter and when the, the word boom comes up you get to jump up and scare me and shout boom are you ready here we go yes Q boom and they jump up and they scare you and ha 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 isn't that funny um but this is a, a just good game for repetition and um we have to do things over and over again and this game is also good for numbers sight words you see how you can adapt these to whatever skill you're working on and then i also change boom in october instead of boom it could be a cat black cat and ah, they could be meow or in november it could be a turkey and they jump up and go gobble 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 um so you can change this with different holidays or things that you're studying about if you're studying about dinosaurs it could be a dinosaur and they go ah, like a dinosaur oh my goodness i've talked too long and i still have so many things to share with you but um just to let you know Starting July 5th on my website, each day I'm going to have a project. I call it DIY PD for the summer. I have something that you can do. And um, also wanted to let you know um, we're going to be, this is now available, playing with letters. And I, one of the, my favorite things, um, there's over 140 pages in this book, but one of my favorite things, um, there is an alphabet book that you can run off for each child. And Carolyn wrote these cute little poems for each letter. Apples, ants, and alligators do not seem much the same, except the letter A is the beginning of each name. So wouldn't this be a great thing? Um, and, and you don't have to go in alphabetical order, whatever you're focusing on, that they could have this letter and they could have a pocket folder and they could keep their letters in here. And um, instead of something where they color in the pictures that start with A, they can do their own A picture. So they can draw things that start with A, they can cut out magazine pictures, they can write words, they can write sentences. It's very open. Anytime you have an open page, I think that's great because whatever level they're at, they have a challenge. So, um, golly gee, there's so many more things I wanted to share with you, but you'll just have to go to my website and check these things out. Um, and you'll have to take a look at our Playing With Letters book. It's meant to be a resource that you can use with any program that you might be doing. So I hope you're having a super duper summer. Um, just, just enjoy each day and um, think about how much fun you're going to have when school starts because you're going to get that wonderful class this year. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, 
U, V, W, X, Y, Z. Now my time is up, so put the letters to sleep. Thank you so much for joining me. Just to let you know, I'm going to be in um, Chicago for the Illinois ASCD. I'm going to be doing a workshop there um, in the middle of July. I'm also going to be doing at Splash in Dallas, and I've got some more great things coming up in the fall. So I hope I'll see you then. Take care. God bless. Happy, happy summer days to you, and God bless America. Happy 4th of July.